this is the uh, Eureka tool that I built and uh, in this video what I want to do is give you an idea of how it all works and uh, what it does to uh, allow you to make better uh, gear cutters these are the gear multi-tooth gear cutters that I've been making with just a I cut a little bit of back relief here but this is a store-bought cutter and you can see with the store-bought cutter the, the, the relief is different and this is what the Eureka tool is capable of doing is cutting that type of a relief and uh, just so that you can get a better look at it let me show you how it works in AutoCAD Alright, we're in AutoCAD right now and I'm showing you the difference between the Eureka tool and Robert Porter's uh, multi-tooth cutter. They both start out the same except for the Eureka tool uses an inch and a quarter blank and the Porter's method I've been using a one inch blank. We go on next and with the same thing here is we're going to drill a hole that's a little bit under a half inch and then we're room ream it or bore it to half inch. The arbor that I put my gear cutters on is a half inch arbor. The next move is the same on both of them too. You're going to, on the circumference of the gear blank, on both of them, you're going to create the form that you're going to be making. With Robert Porter's method, I was making cyclodial gears, so we're going to be cutting a form that would be able to cut this onto the gear. Uh, with the Eureka tool, I'm going to be doing a uh, uh, involute gear form, and so that would be cut on the side here to cut an involute form similar to that. The next move I only do on the uh, Eureka tool, and that's they drill these 8 inch holes around here. Uh, and there's 12 of them because it's going to be 12 teeth on this cutter, where on Robert Porter's cutter there's only 10. The next part is I use a uh, slitting saw. On the Eureka tool, I'm right on the center line, okay, which cuts the very bottom of the 8 inch holes that I just drilled. Robert Porter's method, we top off here, bring it down to the center line, and then we do some mathematical calculations to get a seven or an eight degree uh, radial rake into the cut. I may do something like this with the uh, Eureka tool later after I've played with it for a bit. And then when your cuts are completed, this is what the Eureka tool looks like, the blank on the Eureka tool. And this one is the one for Porter's, and you can see that there is a scooping action that you get with that radial rake. The next move is slitting saw for both of them. With the Eureka tool, you're just cutting on the bottom here to form these teeth over here that you can see over here. Here I use the back side of the tooth to cut a uh, relief behind the cutting edge. These are the cutting edges here, and I'm just cutting a relief in the back, and you can see it comes out like that when you're all done. Now with Porter's tool, I'm completed here, I just go in and harden it and everything like that. But you can see this red line here, that's the circumference of the tool steel. And you can see that in between these green lines, the, that part would, is still there. It's right here in this uh, blow up of it. And that actually rubs when you're doing the cutting because uh, uh, there's no relief there. With the Eureka tool, you get a cut that looks like this. Okay, and you're using a button tool like that to cut it and you get a, uh, a cut that looks like that. But between the two cutters, there is a little bit of an opening here, so you do find that you have an area in the back here. Now that has to be uh, cut off with a flat cutter, and uh, in today's demonstration, I will be using the flat cutter and not uh, the, uh, uh, the button tool. So now what I'd like to do is I'm going to play the introduction for you again, but I'm going to add some commentary to it uh, to do some explaining that might make sense now that you've seen this. And there's our cutting right there. If you can see that arrow, I'm pointing to the cutting of the back side there. There's your, your 30 thou eccentric that allows the in cut here. So the in cut on that is 30 thou. On the back side here, you can see the big, bigger eccentric wheel back here, and that's causing the indexing here. There's a paw back there that is pushing this uh, indexing sleeve forward with each revolution. And then down here, you can see this paw down here, that one is stopping it from uh, reversing after it's been pushed into position. You can hear the two clicks. The first click is the pushing one, the second click is when the bottom one kicks in. And that's how the tool works. 
And there it is, just as it comes off the lathe. You can see the form relief on the back of each one of the teeth. So let's go ahead and uh, take this upstairs and I'll take it apart and show you each of the individual pieces. This is the nut that holds the uh, indexing sleeve on. It's uh, 40 TPI and uh, it's a rather uh, shallow thread. Uh, and uh, I had to cut it on the lathe because I didn't have a die for it. So I think if I was to do it again, I might find a, a, a comparable die. And this is 40 TPI as well, this nut here. And uh, it holds the, uh, the blank on. And this thing holds the indexing sleeve, which should slip right off now. There's your main mandrel. Okay, there's the paw and the music wire spring for your paw. And this is the ring that actually holds your indexing sleeve in there. So let's get that out of there. I want to show you the indexing sleeve. So that comes off. And now your indexing sleeve. And this paw here, okay, that's the one for the stopping of the reversing of it. And it's once again just music wire holding it. And this dowel pin links the two together so that they don't ro rotate independently. And this piece just comes off with a set screw. This is what hooks it up to your face plate to apply the drive to the unit. And this is in the front here. This is your first eccentric. The, uh, it's off 30 thou, so it forces the cutter in 30 thou to cut the back side of your, uh, your cutter blank. And this big eccentric in the back here of course was cut on a four jaw chuck. It's much larger, but that is what allows the indexing to take place. Now this sleeve sits on here like this and it has to have no slop or anything like that, but it has to spin ev evenly. And these are this and this are your bearing surfaces and your bearing surfaces in here. And so once you get these two mating correctly, you've got a pretty uh, an operating uh, tool pretty much. So let's uh, go ahead and put this all back together again. All out of the way. Get that down in there. All right. So there's our indexing feature. Put our ring on there to hold it in position. Oops. Now I'm a little tighter. And now we're just going to check to make sure it rotates smoothly. Yep, no problems there. Our mandrel. that. The indexing sleeve goes in there. Whoops. There you go. go and we'll put our nut on the end here and our blank and the nut to hold the blank and let's put our Bring on the pole. There we go. And there's our arm that goes to the drive plate on the lathe. Put that on there so I can show you something here. 
Let me get it on there first. Okay. So now, as the uh, lathe rotates, this pawl goes back, gets into position. You hear that click? It's in position. Now it pushes it forward. Now you're going to hear a second click. Now that second click is this paw down here jumping in to hold it from reversing. So when you continue on, the eccentric turns it backwards, clicks it into position, runs it forward. There's the other click for the other one down the bottom. The interesting part about it is you can do it backwards. There's your top click, pushes it forward. There's your bottom click. Runs the exact same whether you run it backwards or forwards. It doesn't really matter. It's kind of an interesting tool. Um, so there you go. There's a, 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 a close-up look at the intricacies of the Eureka tool. The next video I will take it and, and I'll show you all the videos. I took videos while I was building it. And I'll put all those videos together and uh, show you how I built it. Alright, so let me give you a little bit of background about the Eureka tool here. Uh, a friend of mine uh, from the uh, YouTube, uh, My Heap, uh, sent me a message and uh, said I should probably check out the Eureka tool. And uh, he was really right. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I had actually seen it before in Ian, uh, Ian Law's book here. The last three pages of the book, there's the drawings that you need to build, the, to build it. It's just in the last three pages. There's some pictures of it here, but it didn't really catch my attention uh, because it was too hard, too complicated to understand by just reading about it. Uh, but he said, "I uh, uh, my heap uh, turned me on to some uh, YouTube videos, and once I saw how it worked, I knew right away that I wanted to play around with this. And I guess it was first brought out in Model Engineer article uh, some time ago." And just the other day, a guy gave me a copy of it, and there's the copy of that. Uh, and that's available on the internet. Uh, you can find that with a little bit of a Google search. And then you'll also find that in 1895, there was a pattern on a tool very similar to the Eureka tool for making cutters, and so on and so forth. And this is the patent officers on that. And then again, in 1905, there was another one. Uh, they're both fairly similar. They're a little, they're different, but they're fairly similar, and worth a look at if you want, if you're interested in that. And then uh, I also uh, ran into it in uh, Malcolm Wilde's uh, wheel and gear cutting. This is the uh, form relief tool here. And all he's, he doesn't say much about it, but he's got some pictures in here. And uh, so it's in there as well. Uh, not much of a, an article on it or anything like that. This is in the watchmaker's lathe. He shows you putting slitting saw cuts in there and then using a brass bump to bump them into position and uh, therefore getting the form relief you need. Uh, I've never tried that. Uh, and in the bench, uh, uh, practical bench work for horologists, he he's got an interesting way of doing it. You drill holes around it, and then you put in a tapered pin and force the tapered pin through it, and that'll give you the form relief that you need. I like that idea, but I've never tried it. I never felt that I needed to. And even in this book by uh, John Wilding on uh, his eight-day clock, He's got one in here with a slitting saw idea and using the brass bump to bump it into position. And in uh, Malcolm Wilde's book, he shows this uh, cutter relief using the four jaw chuck to make a cutter like that. And I've noticed it on the web, was also mentioned. Uh, by John Stevenson. Yeah, uh, John Stevenson, and uh, he gives you the whole rundown on it, and that's available on the web. And look for cutting, cutting involute gears with form tools. 
and uh, you get an idea of how he does it with a uh, four jaw chuck as well. Well, thank you all for watching, and I hope you'll stay tuned. Uh, you'll come back to watch uh, uh, the building of the tool itself. Uh, I've got a lot of videos and a lot of editing to do, but I'll try to get it down to 15 minutes, and I'll, uh, I'll share it with you all uh, pretty soon here now. Have a nice day. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye now.